Hi, everybody. This is Mike Oppenheim, and you are listening to Coffin Talk, interviews with the living, a weekly podcast that explores how our views on death affect the way we live our life. Today, our guest is Seth Dietlin. He's a human potential activator and a new thought leader. He's also a conscious filmmaker, content creator, certified hypnotherapist, angel psychic medium, and energy healer. In addition to that, he's the author of The Ascension with the Angels Tarot, and he facilitates courses and events designed to empower others to access higher levels of conscious awareness through communication with their angels and the quantum field of intelligence. As an angel communicator himself, Seth's message focuses on their revelations and guidance for humanity in heralding of the new earth, a collective consciousness revolution, conscious revolution, a collective conscious revolution, and the transformational process that humanity is currently experiencing. Seth, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. Um, yeah, it's great to have you on, and I'm dying to ask you about 500 questions, but I am forced by my producers and myself to ask you the requisite three questions, which is, how old are you, where did you grow up, and what generation, if any, do you consider yourself a member of? Good, and I love that you're dying to ask, <laughs> considering the title of your show, but that's good. <laughs> I love it. So... Uh, where did I grow up? I um, am from Southern California, um, Orange County, and the Los Angeles area. I am 56 years old, and I would consider myself Generation X. Awesome. Great answers. And it's just good to situate where you are and all that. Um, so, oh gosh, so many questions. I'm going to start with hypnotherapy, actually, um, only because... I was a cigarette smoker for many, many years, and I would quit constantly for one to three months with like a lot of effort, and then I would just go back to them. And finally, someone said, just see a hypnotherapist. And I was like, I'm not going to pay some quack, blah, blah, blah. Well, next thing you know, I paid some quack 500 bucks, and I haven't smoked a cigarette in like 20 years. So I have so much respect for it. Um, so I'm curious, uh, how much hypnotherapy do you currently do, and how did you get into that field? Great. Well, that's a good question. Well, first of all, it is my full-time gig uh, with the angels and the conscious creation. And so I do several sessions per week uh, continually. It constantly evolves. And I love that you quit smoking from it. There's so much that we can do from it that is, it's unlimited, basically, what we can do with it. And we, it depends on how we apply it. In your case, you were able to locate the higher part of yourself to actually find the power that you have, you really have, mm -hmm. to do that. And um, what? how did I get into it? Well, first I started communicating with the angels. And when I understood the two levels of awareness, which is you could call it the left brain and the right brain, or you could call it the heart and mind. But we have two levels of awareness, and one is more expansive and one is more contracting. One is powerful and one not so powerful. And usually the world operates on the least powerful mechanism, not realizing that they have access to a higher one. So after I started communicating with the angels, I really got that division in our awareness or consciousness or mind. And I actually saw a hypnotherapist to do a past life regression mm. and to, to communicate with some people who had crossed over. And it was so authentic and so amazing that I kept going back for more sessions. Uh, as you know from doing hypnosis, when we're in hypnosis, we're in our most expansive space, which also feels very good, very blissful, and very aligned, and very powerful. And I loved that feeling. It also worked hand in hand to accelerate my connection with the angels mm. because the more I access the higher mind, the more I was able to integrate the higher frequencies of the angel communication. And now when I do the work, I do things like help people connect with their spirit guides, visit the Akashic records. We actually view the books of life with our angels and the angels will take us to some pretty incredible scenes where we can see scenes from the future possibilities of our life and past. And I love being able to help people communicate with those who have passed on and to be able to understand life on earth because when we do past life regressions, we get an opportunity to transition each time we do one of those. So I was really fascinated by that and the ability that it has to take people into these experiences. 
Wow. That was uh, a great answer with a lot to unpack, but you also sort of answered some of my 500 questions. So it's good. We're making progress. Um, but I really did appreciate that. Good. Yes. And I've never heard anyone refer to the left brain and right brain as also the body soul or mind soul connection, which I thought was fantastic. Um, so what question to ask you first from all that? Um, I'm going to make it personal because I think in your answer, you'll probably answer a bunch of other questions. Uh, 2024, I've decided um, I don't normally set New Year's goals, but this one like happened so fluidly as we crescendoed from 23 into this year that it just seems natural to call it a goal for this year. But really, it's a life goal. But I've realized recently that I have something uh, weird that I have self-diagnosed, which is an ambition problem. And what I mean by that is not that I have too much ambition. Ambition is bad. I mean that I have come to realize that most of my mental anguish comes from an obsession over ambitious projects and goals I have, which is the opposite of like living a life. It's living for a future. So when you mentioned angels and the Akashic Records and the future, it made me think, is knowing why I'm here doesn't seem to actually help me with what I'm talking about because those goals are very like relative and they have ends. And I kind of am starting to get the impression that we don't really have ends. So I'm not even going to finish that question. I'm going to assume you know what I'm getting at, but if you want me to follow up or clarify anything, go ahead. No, what I get here that's helpful is that you're not alone first and foremost in actually seeing the value of what we experience in the world of illusions as something that is final and something that is to be sought or had. And it is difficult when we live in a world that is oriented toward the left brain to actually get that it is the process of creativity, the process of being fully alive, that is the joy that we came here for. So through hypnotherapy, and I want to clarify something as well. If you or your audience know who Dolores Cannon is, I would consider myself someone who is in the same bandwidth of her. And I found myself there before I ever got introduced to her work, which is using the work to help people uh, access higher states of consciousness. And with that higher state of consciousness, anything else is possible. Well, one of the things that we discover when we're there is that we have, let's say, timeline variations. And as we go through certain experiences, the experience of expansion is the reason that we're doing it. I'm going to use a very solid example to really point this out. Cool. I in the television industry. I went to film school. I am a SAG-AFTRA actor, unfortunately. <laughs> and, but, be, be, and I did have goals in that industry, and I actually did create a television show, a sitcom that got greenlit for production. And as a result of that, I was going to be one of the actors on the show. Talk about a dream come true wow. if that's one of your goals in life. Before production, the whole thing exploded and went away. And that could have been considered a very disappointing experience because I didn't get to do that thing that I set out to do and almost accomplished. However, in the meantime, I got to engage in some delicious creativity. I got to expand as a soul. And technically, that is what the angels call the only souvenir that we take with us when we're done, is that expansion. And so when we begin to pivot our paradigm or perspective about what we're doing, and we're doing it in the now, then this shifts into a state of enjoyment that is so expansive that we ultimately find that we access, and I'm going to say this, a level of magic that starts to create amazing things to make us go, whoa, what just happened here? And technically, it is not expansion, and it is that level of alignment with the quantum field and the creative potential that that has that is our real goal. So instead of still being stuck in Hollywood, thank God I'm not in that <laughs> world, or, right? Yeah. But inst instead of being stuck in that, my soul expanded. And today, I truly live what I consider a magical experience 
because things happen that can't be described in logical terms. And I watch life play with me. And we all have that in our design. And so all of these things, whether we start up a company and then it fails, and then we decide to become a dentist for two days and then change our minds after going to dental school, whatever that is, it expands us to the point where we remember that we are a multidimensional being that has this immense creative potential. And we end up integrating our true design as part of who we are in this embodied experience. And then we get to play with it. And so you're actually pivoting from the path being about the destination. And in a certain way, you'll, at some point, you'll recognize the expansion that you have garnered as a result of being on these different paths. And now you're going to start to savor it. That's so cool. And that also reminds me of um, someone I deeply respect uh, once told me that the things you cherish in this world are nothing to be cherished in the real reality. You know, like you talked about how this is a world of illusions and I love that phrase and I completely agree. And meanwhile, the things that nobody really seems to laud or give attention to here in this world of illusions are the very things that you will, that people are like cheering for on the other side, the other side, meaning like not alive here on earth. Uh, does that resonate with you? Absolutely. And it's funny because I have a fresh story that actually enhances what you just said cool because last last night i had a dream where one of my dogs visited me and this dog i had was a cavalier king charles spaniel his name was paddington and during the course of the time that i had him i went and lived in europe and then i started working 16 hours a day on set in the television industry well because of that and when i left for europe he was able to go and live with a friend of mine who became like a mother to me and ultimately, because Paddington had to go live with her, we ended up having this really amazing relationship. Well, he visited me in my dream last night, and I could feel the love of this dog, but I could also feel the love of my dear friend, Jean, who's like a mother to me. She's like a, a mother and a, an amazing friend to me. And I started realizing how grateful and blessed I am for having had this person and it, I woke up remembering that the best thing in life is the people that we encounter. That is the most delicious aspect of life. And so because I'm actually in Brazil right now and six hours ahead of LA time zone, I waited until it was appropriate time and I texted her and I said, hey, Paddington came to me in the dream. He wanted to say hi and he wanted to make sure you're okay. At which point she had shared with me that she was up all night with uh, not being able to sleep. And then I knew what was going on was that I was supposed to check on her because of that. But then I had an opportunity to share with her how grateful I am that our paths crossed. And so it's interesting because when we do get into higher states of consciousness, we do start to value what's truly valuable. And pretty soon we don't even value the stuff that we didn't. And if you'll notice as humans consciousness is rising, mm -hmm. people don't really care about celebrities anymore. And all of these other things, you're watching a diminished value towards because they aren't valuable whatsoever. So in a way, you're seeing that in action as well. Wow, you actually did really answer a lot of my questions because I was going to get into like politicians and celebrity reverence and how we keep just, you know, um, you said you read my essay, so I'm assuming you're familiar with my attitude about people just shrugging off uh responsibility and that enables terrible responsibility and then we point fingers at the terrible responsibility and say that's all the problems in my life and so it's interesting because what you're talking about with higher consciousness this revolution and people to me it's all very connected but it also begs me to ask another question that i've uh constantly toiled with which is um even before I experimented with psychedelic drugs and marijuana, I was obsessed with the occult, like tarot decks and, you know, what we call the occult, um, everything you just spoke about. And uh, as I pursued those things, plus like, you know, LSD, mushrooms, ayahuasca, things like that, I never got so into them that I was obsessed or doing them too often. But I every time realized like, OK, you've you've peaked at something that you could actually just achieve normally without these things. But then I, I started to wonder now, like, 
how much time should I be playing with higher consciousness versus is the majority of the real work to be done when I'm not in those states of higher consciousness or am I supposed to be seeking a permanent blend? A good blend okay. is what it is. And interesting enough, if you do everything strictly via linear means, then it's not quite as powerful, not just the results, but the experience itself. And if you do everything from quantum means or in your quantum mind, then it doesn't really get grounded in reality where you get to really have a true visceral experience, whatever that might be. Totally, and yeah. It, it, it can sometimes be enjoying nature and it can sometimes be finding ourselves visiting with one of our friends. But the linear part is maybe I have to actually get in my car and drive it over to their house so that I can go spend time with them. Or in this case, open up my computer and pick up the phone and have this conversation with you for the podcast. It is a little bit of both. And they both need each other, but they need each other in the right mixture. Or as you could say, combustion formula, if we understand uh, combustion engine, but we have to have this in the right formula, which brings us to the whole value of creating work around empowering other people to connect with higher consciousness mm. and then, of course, finding the balance. That's so interesting because that is like now I've realized only very recently, not too little too late, but definitely at the right time that that is really all I want to do with the rest of my life is just influence everyone I can without, um, without authoritative or totalitarian <laughs> attitudes um so you know just consider these things which actually is one of my original questions i wanted to ask you which is um with all due respect we're both from california so when you tell me that you talk to angels i actually like hear that as a normal sentence and i respect you um <laughs> because i spent time on the east coast and other areas of this country as well as in other countries i know that uh many people would just laugh at that and immediately dismiss you and anything you're gonna say after that I'm curious what your approach is towards that less than what you think of those people, because I'm in a similar boat now where I'm in order to reach people, you have to be credible in their eyes. And so I, I not worry, but I wonder how to like balance that. So how do you specifically address that? I'm, I'm sure you've dealt with it. Hey, everyone. If you're a fan of the show, please head over to MikeyOp.com and click the subscribe button. It's the best way to support us. And it's free. That's M-I-K-E-Y-O-P-P.com. Thanks. Oh, all the time. And it's not just the angels, but there's lots of things about being from California that you travel outside the state. <laughs> and people look at us like we just landed from the moon. But that's, you know, part and parcel of the California. Well, first of all, one of the things that I can say is that as awareness is increasing, I'm finding people that are interested in this work uh, from all kinds of places that you expect it, at least, which is really cool that it's expanding in a certain way. And everyone is at a different stage in the journey. And in much the same way, I don't discount somebody because they haven't encompassed this yet. I trust that if someone wants to stay in a linear and practical reality, and if they want to stay in their lean, lane, it doesn't necessarily disvalidate what I experience. So I just let them be who they are. And if they don't want to, or it's not their time, to open up to any of this, that's okay for them too. And I'm not here to convince anybody that any of this is real. I know that what I experience and those that I run across is very real. And just because somebody doesn't believe in it doesn't mean that the experience of someone else isn't real. And I just let it be. And I find that from having that, I don't really attract a lot of that. It comes mm -hmm. in once in a while. I get emails every once in a while from people who have listened to me talk about the quantum stuff with the angels and then they'll uh say something uh you know just unkind mm -hmm. and i'll be like oh, okay i guess i just triggered that person because we all end up back in full spiritual form at some point the body is definitely the temp the temporary part and the linear part of our awareness or our mind only is with the body. So eventually we all return to source or to spirit and we become that expansive being again. And at that point, the person gets to discover why they took a path that was meant to stay in the linear lane. 
and some people who were allowed to basically lane change like we do in California. That's so cool. And you uh, totally answered the pivotal question of the podcast at the exact moment where I would normally ask it. So that was awesome. You just answered literally what do you think happens when you die? So if anyone wasn't clear, uh, just rewind by about 30 seconds to a minute and re-listen to stuff. Very eloquently explain exactly what he thinks happens when you die. And my follow-up question to that would be, um, I, I asked a, a not a similar guest as in a person similar to you, but I asked... A, a different guest very recently um what happens like do you have to come back to earth or do, is it a choice and she said something i'd never heard before which she said well if you do really terrible things here you're not allowed to come back and that was the exact opposite of what i would have expected i am not pitting you against this other guest so much as i'm just curious uh do you have a similar answer like what are the rules for coming to earth and returning to earth yes well first of all earth is becoming a different place it's, it's becoming uh, oh. higher frequencies. So one of the things that is happening with this one dimensional variation, and keep in mind, it's one of many, mm -hmm. is that this dimensional variation is uh, up leveling in a form of a reboot. So right now, what's happening, a lot of people are leaving the planet for what appears to be many reasons. But they're actually leaving because they didn't agree to be part of this transition. So there are rules that apply to it before the shift or reboot. But there's going to be different rules as we go into this reboot. Because those that come into the rebooted version, by the way, we're going to be in the rebooted version sooner than you think, which is why we're seeing more uh, mortality mm -hmm. than normal. Makes sense. Those that have a soul agreement not to be part of this transition will find an interesting way, whatever way they agree to, to part as we're making this reboot. But when we get into the rebooted version of this, only those, let's say, souls who are of a certain vibration that can live in a certain way will be allowed to be back here. And let's just say that those who feel that they have more because they are separate beings and enjoy exploiting others, they won't be allowed here. They're actually going to be sent to another dimension where they would be the recipient of that exploitation because they have to experience it full circle. So those that have a plan to exploit humanity mm -hmm. will exit and be sent to a dimension where they will be exploited in the same way they wished to exploit humanity and those that operate with the light will be here because this will be a higher vibrating reality so in the very near future immediately actually those that come back here are those that will be expanded in frequency enough to be able to live in a world that doesn't have exploitation in its codes anymore that's cool. That makes a lot of sense with me. Um, and you are and were going to be and you still are going to be one of the actually, I think you're the first guest I'm ever going to ask an overtly uh, political question to. But as a fellow American living in uh, America on January 9th, 2024, um, to me, it seems a foregone conclusion that it doesn't matter who we elect in this election cycle, that we've already elected a system that is going to propel us into uh, a lot of mortality is my uh, word choice for this. Um, so I'm just curious if you agree, disagree, and if you have any thoughts on that. Well, I agree with what you said. We are on a path that is sort of divinely chosen, but the end game here is actually the end of the system altogether. Yeah, okay. The system is a spiritual teacher, and it is actually finished teaching humanity what it needs to learn for the reboot. When the reboot occurs, that whole system will be gone. Cool. I mean, I, I like feel that so intuitively that it's almost laughable and it makes uh, it very hard to take other people seriously who are worried about it. And yet my empathy, which is like probably my most raging problem in my life, uh, it's something I cannot control and it tends to overwhelm me. It's screaming, help these people, help them calm down. Like don't, don't uh, abandon them as the reboot happens, as you refer to it. Right. So are people like you and me who were born before the reboot, but expect to be here during it slash after? Because again, I'm not preoccupied with whether I die during it or not. I just want to be a helpful part of it. Are we are we like engaged in a battle with people or forces, or are we just actually doing our thing and everything's unfolding? We're not in a battle at all. Okay. And technically what happens is that 
when we reboot, we're in a completely different variation of reality. So rather than defeating something that is, we end up in another variation or plane based on frequency. And in that plane, the system just doesn't exist. It wasn't defeated. Mm -hmm. It actually got us to the frequency where we don't need it anymore, and it just doesn't exist. Will it appear to collapse before it as part of that transition and reboot? Yes. But the angels call us New Earth architects. Mm -hmm. Those of us who do understand that the old paradigm is actually dissolving and a new one is afoot and we feel it inside of us. Now, I started communicating with the angels 20 years ago and I make the joke they didn't come in to teach me to play the harp. The first thing I started talking about is the new earth. And I believed them because there was something that I knew inside my body was accurate. And they told me 20 years ago, at the end of this transition, you will have no more money system like you have now. Mm. There's, you'll have no more government. You'll have no more any of the constructs, no Hollywood, no medical system, no anything like that, because your souls will be evolved to the point where you won't need any of it. Mm -hmm. And as we go along, that information came along first before I got the practical information about how those constructs or false constructs as the angels call them actually don't serve humanity in the way that we had accepted they only serve humanity as a catalyst to this expansion that brings us into the fuller aspects of our true design because we aren't humans at all we are multi-dimensional beings that have a full array a full bandwidth of doing something far more powerful than driving into a gas station and paying six dollars a gallon for gas <laughs> i love the way you think and i love the way you talk and i definitely share your uh attitude is the most profound experience a human has going to be found at the level of higher consciousness or is it going to be found like after your life when you review it like you talked about like which is which is like more essential in the longer longer term picture well those of us who are here as part of the reboot what happens is that we're getting to the point where we remember who we truly are. Okay. And then when we realize that this is holographic or an illusion, the memory of who we are, we're going to play with that creativity because it's more unlimited than we can possibly imagine. Then we can revert back into that fuller spiritual form without the form around us, mm -hmm. and then we'll probably come back and do it again. What you just said as far as the first time you encountered the angels and they gave you a message 20 years ago was like beyond profound. So that might be your answer to this, but um, either excluding that or including that, what is the most special message you've ever received from the angels if you're willing to share it with us? That's a good question because uh, there's so many of them. Ultimately, we are that that created the entire cosmos to begin with. And when you look around and feel that you're separate from everything that there is, and then when you switch into the knowing that you created it before you got here to play it, that I think is my favorite message from them. Because when you realize that you have the power to create Jupiter and the giraffe, then you realize that you have the power to create the company that you want to create or to spread the love and light that you want to spread. That's so cool. And that really does tie into my question about ambition and outcomes and everything. Cause I, it just does it clicks and gels with me. Seth, you've been an incredible guest. Um, you're an incredible person and I love your sense of humor. I love your uh, specific and unspecific messages for humanity. And I love the confidence with which you speak about yourself and your life. It's, um, it's not uh, arrogant and it doesn't come across as braggadocious, which is uh, unfortunately something that I think can happen to even the best of us when we have these higher consciousness experiences. So thank you for all of that. And uh, before I do let you go, is there anything you want to let our audience know? I just want to tell them you're on the right path and you're in good company and expect the best because there's power of creativity and the power of positive expectancy, which is another word of saying faith. By being there, you put yourself in the timeline where the most amazing things happen. And it literally is by stepping into the power of positive expectancy that you have a different experience the one that you actually want.
Well, thank you again, Seth. That was incredible. And again, if you want to meet Seth or find him, uh, there will be plenty of links in the notes. And for those of you listening along at home, thank you again for your continued support of the Coffin Talk podcast. The number one way to help the show is to head over to MikeyUp.com. That's M-I-K-E-Y-O-P-P.com and uh, sign up for the newsletter for free or become a premium subscriber for extra goodies and also to help support the show. Thank you so much. Once again, my name is Mike Oppenheim. You have been listening to Coffin Talk and we will see you soon.